I've got Trevor or Trevina. Yeah. Gonna be released on my plot tonight. I love this sign. The allotment, our happy place. Love that. A host of go a host of golden daffodils. <laughs> So, have the daffodils turned pink? One of the pots has started to flower, and I'm just about to show you. What, what do you think then? Hi, I'm Linda, and this here is the Feel Good Garden. Welcome. Been busy, as always, and you're always busy down the allotments. I hung that down, I put some string there, and I put that a bit lower. I think it looks better, don't you? Anyway, a lot's been happening lately. An update on our Trevor. Trevor arrived, Mark brought him over in a little tub and he covered it with polythene. We made a hole in the middle for Trevor to get out because it was raining that evening. So it was an extra protection. So we put him under the wheelbarrow. What have you got there, Linda? I've got Trevor or Trevina. Yeah. Gonna be released on my plot tonight. Lovely. We're all excited. He's holding the camera at the minute. I'm the cameraman. You're the cameraman, yeah. So we're all excited. We're hoping that uh, Trevor or Trevina's gonna come out. So uh, let's put him, put him or her in place. Oh. Right. Are we going to have a coffee now, Linda, and wait for yeah, we'll Trevor or Trevina to come out? Yeah. There we are. Lovely. We left the plastic on there to um, back to protection. Right. Coffee. Coffee time. Danny kindly lent me his trail cam. So we sat, set that up where Trevor was going to come out. And... Um, we left the food by there to see if he'd go there and eat it. And we've got some footage to show you. Well, some pigeons pop by, a cat pop by, and then the big thing out popped our little Trev.
Well, I look back on the footage because on one part of it, little Trev was having a scratch. And I thought, ooh, is that a little, um, little todger there? <laughs> anyway, I took a photograph, I ringed it. I sent it to Danny and I also sent it to Mark and his wife, Sandra. They are the experts. Danny says, leave the poor, leave the poor thing alone, give it some privacy. And uh, Mark and his wife thinks, no, it's his, t it's his tail. Oh, so the school's still out. We still don't know if it's Trevor or Trevina, but that doesn't matter. We love Trev, wherever. You'll have, to, you'll have to excuse my croaky voice. I've had a cold the last few days, so, um, but I'm on the mend now, all hunky-dory now. I'm getting there. I think I sound worse than I actually am now because I feel, I feel okay now. I've been on the honey and lemon. <laughs> Talking of honey and lemon, I've been saving lemon seeds. I might have a go growing lemon trees next. Any of you tried that? Anyway, where was I? Right, oh yes, right. We've taken the nets off some of the beds and um, they're going to be prepared, ready to, to plant in and so, also sow in. We've left the beds bare so that hopefully any predators, birds and whatnot, hedgehogs, can go and have a little look around, see if there's anything they fancy, some nice fresh produce. So um, hopefully they will, and hopefully that I'm hoping that Trevor stayed on the on the plot, and he's having a little a little go in there. These spring these spring plants are coming out lovely. In our spring bed, we've got some sweetness daffodils, although they've been eaten away. But that one particularly, it looks pretty. And then we've got primroses. So we've got a few different colours in the primroses. And then we've got hyacinths. And we've got a few different colours in those. Then we've got the muscari or the grape hyacinths. And then we've got a lighter colour grape hyacinth there. These here are forget-me-nots, they haven't flowered yet. The ones along here, they've just started to flower. And the ones on the corner by there. That there's a red jap erisimum. Hyacinth, Hyacinth. Here we've got perennial cornflowers and they start already starting to bud. And behind them are Aquilegia. So they'll be nice when they flower. And there's another Aquilegia there. This is one of the poached egg plants I planted. Tulip, and then that fragrant sunshine erisimum is just starting to flower. You can see the little bit of yellow on it there. We've got another red jap erisimum there, and ah, the chives. I've got buds on them and they look really pretty when they flower. So we've got that to look forward to. Daffodils. Oh, these daffodils are coming along nicely. I'm really pleased with those. A host of, go a host of golden daffodils. <laughs> I'll show you a few little things from the plot at the moment. I love this sign. The allotment, our happy place. Love that. And over there we've got the bird feeding station. 
And behind that, we've got some hanging baskets there. They're hanging on the pagoda. I put them there temporarily. But all the, the lettuce, there's mixed lettuce leaves in there. They've all started to flower. So I've left them on there and I thought, oh, I'll leave them on there. Might attract the pollinators. And I've also, also the raw broccoli. I wasn't keen on that at all. So I've let that flower. It looks quite pretty actually. And uh, I thought I'd leave that flower because that too will attract the pollinators. Wheelbarrow is coming along nicely. Now come and have a look at Trev's little house there. His house is, is um, I'm hoping Trev's in there anyway. You know, he can use it as a hotel. He can come and go as he pleases. So I've, the food was gone last night, so I topped that up. So I've got some poultry cat food, which is what Mark was giving, the, giving Trevor, and some water, and, oh, and some little nibbles as well, so some little treats. So um, I'll be checking back on the webcam, um, probably be in my next video now, and see who's been eating it, because somebody's been eating it, whether it's Trevor or whether it's some other predators, I don't know. And look, we've got this lovely little ladybird house. Uh, I love it. I bought it the other day. Shell's had one on her plot for a while, and I've, I've always admired it. And uh, I bought that, and uh, I'm looking to get a couple more if I can. They were on special offer in, in the local shop. So, oh, look at my new bird feeder. Isn't that lovely? I couldn't resist it because it's got a sunflower on it. So, uh, just thinking about the sunflower challenge, you know. Anyway, talking about sunflower challenge, how are your sunflowers coming along? Mine's just starting to germinate now, uh, but they only just start to, starting to come up, so it's definitely worth showing you just yet, really. But I will show you soon. The crow cosmia is coming along nicely. Now, I don't know whether you remember, but back in the day, when I, we first had the um, wheelbarrow there, the Crocosmia was coming out of the back. And it didn't do anything, it didn't flower or anything, it wasn't happy there at all. So I put it in the ground, and that's coming up lovely now, so fingers crossed that'll flower nicely come the summer. We had a nice bit of sunshine earlier, and it was really nice. And all the water features were going, the one in the bird bath, the tap, and the other twirly thing down by there. It's really nice. I love it when it's sunny. Well, I'm in the polytunnel. And for those of you that's been wondering how the Pink Daffodil Challenge is going, the Pink Daffodil Challenge, basically, the daffodils, white daffodils, well, off-white, get watered with beetroot juice. And I also mushed up some beetroot, put that in the pot as well, give it an extra dose. And uh, I thought that would do the trick. So, have the daffodils turned pink? One of the pots has started to flower. And I'm just about to show you. What, what do you think then? Well, here they are. Not exactly pink, are they? But um, maybe the next pot will be. You never know. Since cutting the cabbages, it looks like I've got some little baby cabbages coming. Is it worth leaving those, do you think? Baby cabbages. I'm Linda, and this is the Feel Good Garden.